And game night in Oklahoma City. Good evening from the Oklahoman's Video Studio. I'm Dave Morris along with the sports editor of the Oklahoman, Mike Sherman. Thanks for joining us again tonight. Dave, thanks for doing this. This is fun. We had a good time last week talking uh, about it. It was great. Barry joined us last week, a sports columnist for the Oklahoman, as we pre preview the season opener. And now our weekend of the season. We know a little bit more about the Thunder, a little bit more how the NBA may unfold this season. And tonight we'll preview the game against Toronto. The uh, Thunder and the Raptors tip off at 7 p.m. just down the street at Chesapeake Energy Arena. And, and Mike, I mentioned that. We, we learned a little bit about these teams. The Thunder, 3-1, and one, one of the best teams in the NBA. Toronto, we expected them to be pretty good in the East. They're 4-0, one of three undefeated teams. They beat the Mavericks last night, so this is the back-to-back -back game for them, Dave. Uh, they looked really good last night up against the Mavericks. The Mavericks have that uh, total team makeover every year. It's a bunch of new guys. Wesley Matthews is uh, a Maverick. Uh, so a bunch of guys that, uh, wait a minute, they're on the Mavericks? But the Raptors have their team together, um, a team that was good last year. Not great, but good. The Raptors were good last year. Yeah. Right. Uh, they're big. They play hard. Dwayne Casey is uh, a little bit on the hot seat. You know, he's a guy coaching a little bit for his uh, livelihood there in Toronto. Rex Kalamian. Former Scott Brooks assistants on the bench now at Toronto. Deep knowledge from Mike Sherman. I yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, and and they played uh, they played very well last night. Uh, You're looking at some photos from last night's game, the Raptors in Dallas. You mentioned Dallas retools, but there's still that one guy, that one guy with the sweet jump shot, Dirk Nowitzki, always there. Dirk looked good. Uh, Dirk still still there got game. I'll tell you, Demar Derozan has really become a go-to guy for the Raptors. And uh, they, they'll give the Thunder a good game tonight. Uh, the Thunder, of course, coming off a game where a lot of defensive lapses showed up, um, a lot of turnovers, uh, and that really became a, a story of that last game against Houston. Really, uh, at halftime and uh, midway, early in the third quarter, you looked at that game and thought, they're going to be coming home undefeated, and then the wheels just fell off. They had a shot at it. Um, they certainly made a great game of it. And, and frankly, of the four games, two of them have been bar burners so far. Uh, the game against uh, Orlando was fantastic stuff to watch just from a fan standpoint of zero defense being played. But, you know, lots of great shots uh, from both ends at the end of that game. Toronto, you mentioned DeMar DeRozan averaging 21 points, one of four players from Toronto averaging in double figures from the starters, and they match up actually pretty well with the Thunder and against KD. They do. DeRozan, uh, a guy that was in the draft the same year as Westbrook. And I remember Darnell Mayberry doing his draft preview. This was, uh, the team had not yet, uh, we didn't know what the name of the team was going to be yet. It was the Oklahoma City team to be named later. Um, when Westbrook was drafted, the court decision, I mean, the, uh, the settlement had not been reached yet. So they were still the Seattle Supersonics. So Russell Westbrook's draft uh, picture, he doffed the Supersonics hat. But we had were at that point covering the team as if it was going to move eventually. I mean, they were, they were trying to get out of Seattle. Anyway, uh, we profiled a lot of draft prospects. And one of them was DeMar DeRozan, a guy I really liked. You know, we were sort of obsessing over it. Um, Westbrook was not on our list of uh, – I mean, he was profiled. He's one sure. of the people in the series. Yeah. But DeMar DeRozan – uh, look like uh, the player that he's actually become. Of course, Russell Westbrook looked nothing like the player he's become. He looked like a defensive wizard. And he was the kind of guy that could shut down DeMar DeRozan in college, but really never showed all of his. And so anyway, it's interesting to see how DeRozan has uh, improved. And with him, uh, his improvement has so gone the Raptors. So have gone the Raptors. They'll be one of the best teams in the East, or at least it looks that way one week into the season. Coming off of last six, last year's successful season as well, you mentioned um, the, uh, the the coverage that you guys had in in the newspaper uh, for the draft with Westbrook, and we'll get into towards the end of this kind of what goes into a game night coverage for you and your staff. But in today's paper, the top the uh, the story there. What have we learned about Billy Donovan's sub patterns? And that's something else we can talk about one week into the season. Uh, it's it's a little bit different. It is. You know, Scott Brooks, and uh, caveat, uh, it's not really, we're just not piling on Brooks now that he's gone and he's been fired, had incredible success as the coach here. Uh, but his substitution patterns were very uh, ingrained. You know, you can set your watch by him. Here comes, it's time for Tabo to go out. It's time for uh, Kevin to get his rest. Time for Russ. 
Uh, that's not been the case. Unpredictable is what I would call Billy Donovan. Unpredictable in that uh, Anthony Morrow uh, looked like he was going to be a key reserve and barely, has barely played a couple times, including last night or, uh, or the last game against Houston. Uh, his, ex his explanation, well, they had a lot of perimeter guys out on the court, a lot of guards. Uh, Anthony Morrow, not a guy that goes side to side uh, really good on defense. Um, and so they went more of a defensive uh, posture, bringing Kyle Singler in, playing him. And remember, he didn't even play at all in the opener. So if you can imagine, did you ever see a game where Scott Brooks had the, uh, took a guy in a four-game span, first guy off the bench, and then last guy off the bench uh, four games later? Just never happened. It, it definitely has changed. Your guys, Eric Horn, Anthony Slater in the Oklahoman, and on the chat that we had today on NewsOK.com, broke that down, exactly what you're talking about. Uh, rotation among wing players, shooting, well, you want Morrow. De defense, Roberson. Versatility, Singler. They each bring something different to the table. Yeah, and, and, there's, a, and there's an idea that perhaps Waiters is going to be the guy that provides a little bit of everything. You know, the guy that they need, uh, if, if there's a little bit of uh, defense and shooting that you need, Waiters will be the, go the guy sort of bridging the gap. The other two guys are very much specialists. Singler can give you the good three-point range, uh, lengthwise, uh, a little bit more of that. Morrow's deficiencies really are defensive. I mean, watching him run down the court uh, on defense, not, that's not his strength. So these guys broke it down. The thing about the Thunder is, and you hear this from a lot of analysts, that these guys have more ways to win than, a lot, than most NBA teams. They're very much a Swiss Army knife. And it used to be that way a lot in the backcourt, but now it's in the backcourt, the front court, uh, shooting. They really have a lot of ways they can beat you, which in some ways Scott Brooks didn't even have that much at his disposal. Well, that's true. Something else Donovan is doing, we're seeing KD play in different positions. He's playing a lot at the four for small forward. Yeah, KD uh, at, the, at the four has had an impact. Uh, it's had a little bit of an impact on his playmaking. You haven't seen him with high assist numbers. Now, we're not going to go back to his MVP year when he had those assist numbers, triple-double threatening. Remember, Westbrook was out for, for a long stretch in that season. He was just doing everything at that he point. He was doing everything. We're not going to see that, but we're, we're seeing even much less than that. He's not playmaking. He's not getting the dishes that he did. Also, though, on the flip side, on the plus side of that is, we underrate what a great rebounder Kevin Durant is, what a great defensive rebounder is, and uh, that is a competitive advantage for the Thunder. When, they, when you see Kevin Durant getting 9 and 10 rebounds, that's when this team is gobbling up a ton of loose balls. That may be what's behind uh, him playing that four and going real small. I mentioned the chat that we had on NewsOK.com earlier today, and Eric Horn addressed that. Uh, he spoke to Kevin Durant about that. Um, KD, by the way, is averaging 29.8 points per game and uh, six rebounds per game. KD said, hey, we're running a lot of screens, a lot of pick and rolls. That affects my assist. However, I need to step back, find the open guy. And he also addressed, I need to hit the boards. Part of the reason that he's not getting the assist, though, is that he's giving it to the other team. Gavin's committing <laughs> a lot of turnovers right now. Um, there, was a game, there was a point in the game where Westbrook was running the break, gave it to Kevin. Uh, the defense shaded that way, and he took that one extra dribble and then tried to force a pass. He's over-penetrating a little bit. Um, I've seen Kevin really turn the ball over probably a lot more than, than it's customary to see him do. I mean, your best players, even Tim Duncan, you know, your best players, when they're getting the ball, the defense converges on them and makes it hard for them to pass out of it. So your best players, the ones with high usage rate, they're going to have a ton of turnovers. Kevin's, Kevin, uh, they want to get him that under control. They're on pace. Their offense is clicking. They're on pace for a record 22.6 assists per game right now. It's the fact that they've had 19-plus turnovers every game. You know, um, in that 22.6, uh, they're, they're passing coming from a lot of different people. Um, but also, Russell Westbrook's passing is way underrated. Um, pass, great passes that you're not even seeing uh, come to fruition for assists because they're bobbling the ball a little bit. But some wraparound passes, some, um, some hockey passes that he's throws, hockey assists that he's getting right now. Really incredible, uh, his development. We keep seeing his development every year, and you, you can trace it in shooting percentages. 
on the incline, scoring averages on the incline, three-point uh, shooting on the incline. Last year was rebounding. But I think this year, and I, there's not a stat for it, Dave, but just quality passing, vision, court vision. We're seeing it from Russell Westbrook, and I think that 22.6 number uh, is a testimony to it, too. Yeah, the ball's in his hand a whole lot, so it has to be. He's averaging over 30 points a game, seven and a half rebounds, over nine assists per game. You know, we saw those triple doubles he was throwing out there towards the end of last season when he had to without KD. He's not quite at triple double level, but those are big numbers. They're big numbers. I'm going to commit a little bit of heresy here, but it's something <laughs> we've been talking about. And I'm just really wondering, I think it's worth asking. Who is the Thunder's best player? You know, I was watching the, uh, the crazy overtime game against Orlando uh, the other night with some friends, and that was the discussion that came up. Is this KD's team? Is this Russ's team? And that's, that's fan terms. We don't necessarily need to label whose team it is. But Russell's a really valuable player. Well, your Lakers, back in the day, there was a big discussion about that. Was it Shaq, Shaq or, Kobe? or Kobe? Sure. Think of what... The idea that you could pose that question means for a team. We're talking the sure. elite. We're talking championship contention. Um, as long as you can not make it about egos, unfortunately for your Lakers, it was, it became about that eventually. Uh, both those guys regret that now. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a big article on this. Darnell Mabry did a story on it. Shaq and Kobe got together and did a, did a long interview about how much regret they had over this topic. Well, they should. I mean, and it was a good little lesson for Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, anybody else who's a superstar and, and has an ego. We're looking at some uh, photos of Russ so far this season. Again, there are the numbers. Uh, Byron Scott may not make the end of the season as Laker coach, I would say, and Kobe may not make the end of the season either. He really looks like the age has caught up with him a lot this season. Something fun we have seen, though, early on is the celebrations of uh, Serge Ibaka and Kevin Durant. Serge, when he blocks the shot, he's, uh, it's not the Dikembe Mutombo finger wag. And, and by the way, let me just brag on our product for a second. That's just some of the nuggets and notes that you see just randomly tucked in the sports section is, oh, by the way, let's, let's talk celebrations. And then it's Serge, well, I'm friends with Dikembe, so I don't necessarily want to steal his. I want to do this. Spike the ball and then give the, yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs down. <laughs> you know, Serge doesn't want, I was asked about it today. There's a blog on News OK right now uh, in which he said, I, I don't want to talk too much about it yet. I'm not ready to come out with that yet. Um, it's interesting. You know, Serge speaks, I think, five or six languages. Um, and and he hasn't really found eloquence. Or let me say this. He's found eloquence. He hasn't found openness in really any of them, <laughs> any of them that we speak yet. Serge is all that, not, not all that forthcoming. But that one's interesting, Dave, because, um, you know, the finger wagon, that was somebody else's. That's right. This is a guy saying, you know what, I'm accomplished enough now I can have my own. I've never seen anything like it. Well, Thumbs we're also down. seeing something different from Kevin Durant after, uh, after he drains a, a long-range shot. He's, maybe it's the holiday spirits, the little drummer boy. Maybe that's what it is. There apparently is some, there's a musical uh, answer to this. Also on News OK right now, also on the blog, Dave, I have to say this. Um, it was a DJ it, from several years ago, right? Right, and it's not from the Jersey Boys or the Beatles <laughs> or uh, the, the Bee Gees or Bruce Springsteen, so I'm not really that hip on it, but apparently <laughs> it has something to do with Kevin's musical taste. I saw him do it in the opener against the Spurs. Uh, I was pointing to Jenny and telling her, hey, did you see that? That was a big shot. That, that was one of the very first... Uh, that was a, one of the big shots Kevin hit. He struggled that night. You know, that was a he had really had to work against a Kawhi Leonard, and I wondered if it was just sort of a relief or I'm getting in rhythm. But he's done it since then, so it's now become a deal. You know, something else uh, in Eric's chat, he addressed that today. Somebody asked him, "Hey, Eric, what's the, what, what are you most impressed with from the, the Thunder so far this season?" And he said, "Actually, I'm impressed with how KD is playing." You know, the fact that he's playing so well since he has such a long layover. We, Layoff. any questions? I mean, we've almost forgotten about the foot injury. In fact, I had forgotten about it and hadn't mentioned it until just now when you, you sort of look, it sounded like you were going to ask about it. And it's really not a question. Imagine that. I mean, think of these foot injuries. This time last year, we were running this long list 
of Jones fractures. I was having our guys come, come all over the internet, track down this guy, track down this guy with the Jones fracture, second injury. Didn't we talk about this before the opener? We did. The screw that they put, looked like one of my Lowe's projects. You know, I take it back to Lowe's and go, hey, can you help me fix this? <laughs> this doesn't to, look it's right. It's supposed to be a table leg or something. And yeah. It's, yeah. And it's, you know what, that's what his foot looked like on the screw, uh, on the x-ray. Now he's back to playing just like Kevin Durant. If there's anything missing, I think it's it's his discomfort or or just unfamiliarity with what Billy Donovan's asking him to do. And we were told that this would not look pretty sometimes. You know, the, sure. just to be prepared, it wasn't going to look pretty. Well, if three and one is not pretty, I think everybody will take they it. They were close to being two and two, but they were awfully close to being four and zero oh as well. That's right. And if we want to go back to that clip and listen to Billy Donovan talking about the the turnovers and how they want to address it, we can roll that now as well. Turnovers are the avoidable ones, and how do you solve the issue? Because this isn't a one-game thing. No, it's not. I mean, if you, I think you can probably pretty much go way back to the preseason. You know, it's something that we've got to keep, you know, continually address. I think, uh, you know, with with offense and some of this stuff being new to these guys, I do think, you know, as they get accustomed um, to making reads and those kind of things, it's uh, it will get better. But I also think too, like there's sometimes there's turnovers inside your offense where you're actually trying to make the right pass, but it's not executed well. And then there's those ones that, you know, probably a low risk, high reward, excuse me, a high risk, low reward, you know, kind of pass. Or some of those we, we, we need to maybe get a little bit better at. But I think it's really just our team. It's not like it's one individual. Like on given nights, it's been different people. I just think collectively as a group, we all have got to try to make a, an effort to try to improve and get better in that area. So that's kind of been, been a theme even back to preseason. What's your, what are the avoidable turnovers? Oh, uh, just a live ball ones where, we, you know, we just – Coming off our foot or, you know, playing in the crowd, you know, we don't eliminate those. Um, but, yeah, well, I mean, that's why we lost the game, you know, we gave 25 points, I mean, 25 turnovers, I don't know how many points on turnovers we gave. Yeah, that's the game. I mean, me as a leader, I can't have five turnovers and no assists. That's not acceptable. So, you know, we can correct that. Kevin, how do you feel about the offense you guys are now running here with Coach Donovan and stuff? You feel real good with it? Yeah, it's feel great. You know, we got a lot of different options. You know, a lot of different scores, and uh, you still learning it, but it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, you got a good feel for it. Did the Rockets small ball throw you off, throw the team off any? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they got, you know, they played Brewer and, and Ariza at the fours, you know, so it, it threw us off a little bit. I mean, we were cross-matched a lot, of, you know, coming back in transition, you know, and James was playing forward guard and surge. And, you know, so we don't want you know, sir, guard James. So coming back on the other end, it was kind of, you know, we kind of got confused a little bit. A couple times, made some threes off of it. So we just got to talk and communicate better. What are the avoidable ones that, that you guys could have? I don't know. We'll look at it and see. You're, you're, you had three fouls in the first couple minutes of the third that, that put you on the bench. One of them was after Kevin lost his shoe. Is that one you kind of regret uh, taking the auto foul? Never. Did you try to talk coach out of leaving you on there after the fourth one a bit? No. no. Did, you, did you get the feeling that Houston was in a desperation mode out there? Obviously. I mean, they lost three in a row. They should be desperate. Uh, we, we let them off the hook tonight. But uh, we'll go win by it. It's good stuff, Mike. That was posting comments from Billy Donovan, Kevin Durant, and Russell Westbrook following the loss to Houston. Hey, Russ is great, you know? Whether you like his is – He's just going to give you how he's feeling at that point. Oh, yeah. What did he say? He said, uh, asked about the turnovers. He said, we'll look at him. You yeah. know. And no, we'll look at him. In other words, I can tell you, uh, you don't know. And the other thing I thought was interesting is he just, you know, he's going to play his game. He's not going to reveal a whole lot. Now, on the other side of the thing, though, Dave, is Billy Donovan, which from a fan standpoint, uh, watching his postgame press conferences or his pre – Watch, you'll learn a lot. He, you ask a question, he answers it in detail. Yep. I mean, he explained the sort of degrees of turnovers they're committing right now. That really is another big change. I mean, the, the level of explaining. If you want to learn basketball, and I think uh, we as reporters need to approach this as people who don't know. I mean, we don't know what those guys know. We don't know what Kevin Durant knows, what Russell Westbrook knows about what they're attempting to do, how they should do it. And when, when you ask Kevin, uh, when you ask Billy Donovan a question, 
he gives you a detailed answer. We learned that a lot of those turnovers they're committing, there are, there are some that are uh, high risk, low reward passes, but some of them are good ones just made within their offense and not, not, not executed very well. He's asking these guys to move the ball in ways that they haven't been asked before. So they're not, they're not used to it. A lot of the post-game footage from Billy Donovan, a reporter asked a question, and it's not the instant coach speak that we're hearing from, uh, from Coach Donovan. He actually pauses, thinks about it, and then goes a direction with an answer. My goodness, does he ever. You know, there's a video that we have on News OK from um, the exhibition game, one of the exhibition games at, at, the, at the arena, in which there's a fire alarm going off. And during the fire alarm, everybody else, including the Thunder PR folks, is trying to, trying to end the interview saying, hey, this is hard, nobody can. And Billy Donovan never broke stride, never changed, not, wasn't rattled at all, paused several times, gave a very extended uh, answer to a question that was asked, looked at him, made eye contact. This guy is a communicator on a very elite level. Tonight, it's the Thunder and the Raptors. They tip off at 7 p.m. down at Chesapeake Energy Arena. Tomorrow night, though, the Thunder goes on the road. They are at Chicago, and yet another nugget you will find in the Oklahoma, and we uh, asked Russell Westbrook about being Santa when it comes to doling out fashion. Phil Jackson used to give out, book, give out books. Apparently, Russ gives out fashion to, uh, to his friends and, and, and his teammates, and uh, you guys ask him about Charles Barkley in his fashion, he's like, yeah, Barkley doesn't, uh, can't dress to save his life. I'd just give him, I'd keep him in t-shirts. It's interesting. There's a little bit of a back and forth between Westbrook and Barkley about fashion. If you remember, when Russ first started flashing his, he, his fashion choices weren't as sophisticated once. Remember the, <laughs> the fish hook uh, shirt? I mean, it looked like something uh, your kids give you for Father's Day that you have to wear. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And you wear it every Father's Day. See, I still like this fishing lure uh, shirt. Uh, I remember when he wore that and Barkley just wore him out. Um, Russell has stepped up his game substantially. Russell was sort of exploring the far reaches, the, 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 the whole continuum of fashion back in those days. Now he's kind of got it honed. He's at Barney's. He's, uh, he's He's a guy who can dispense fashion advice, and he says, Charles, not so much for you. Tomorrow night, Charles Barkley will be a game analyst along with Kevin Harlan, Reggie Miller, and Craig Sager. I believe our Mel Brock reporting those media notes in the Oklahoman. Uh, looking ahead, though, Sunday versus Phoenix, Tuesday at the Wizards, and then uh, next Friday hosting the 76ers. They're kind of bouncing back and forth between home and road. Well, there's some big games there. The Chicago Bulls, of course, uh, I think they gave up 130 points last night to the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah, they haven't looked that not that great, really. Well, they and got that's another team. Whose team is it? They got rid of Tom Thibodeau. Who, so there goes the defense. There goes the defense. But, I mean, it not just went, but went away. The whole concept. He's uh, bringing Joe Kim Noah, or was bringing Joe Kim Noah off the bench. And, of course, so that the whole culture and vibe of that team looks very different under Fred Hoiberg. Um, the other thing about it is Joe the Kim mayor. Noah. The, the mayor. The first time Joe Kim Noah and Billy Donovan will meet, uh, and Joe Kim Noah had a really good interview uh, on ESPN, uh, dot com about Billy Donovan. We're going to talk to Donovan in the pregame tonight about Noah. Um, those guys, a lot of mutual respect. Very different sure. people, but proof of how uh, mutual respect and basketball sort of go together. So those two guys won back-to-back -back, uh, titles at Florida together. They meet. They they oppose each other for the first time at the United Center tomorrow. Last week I chatted with you about how uh, readers can uh, participate in the coverage of the Thunder as well as the Sooners and Cowboys on social media, submitting a, a proposal for a headline, if you will. This week, though, let's talk a little bit uh, going behind the headlines of what it takes to cover a game. Uh, home game tonight, but we can talk road game tomorrow night in Chicago as well. It's not just one reporter. It's, it's, it's a big group effort. Right. Especially, I mean, we cover, they, we cover the NBA with – um, uh, more people than most do, you know, um, uh, for home games especially, 90% of the time we'll have a columnist there. So that's two beat writers and a columnist, um, a photographer, oftentimes a videographer. So there's a lot of people from the Oklahoma in there, and we're exploring it from all the different levels. There's photo galleries, you know, upwards of 20, 25, sometimes 30 photographs from a game 
that people can page through, save, do all that. There's video that they can watch on demand. Our guys, when they're on the road, they're shooting video. Do a good job. Uh, they've gotten to the point really where they, and they're shooting their own analysis. You know, they're sitting there with their iPhones and talking into it. They've become, Anthony Slater has become very comfortable doing this. Well, they look comfortable on camera. It's not the hostage video that we, we've seen in the past. This we did is some of those. <laughs> But that's just the progression. In fact, that, that video you saw there of uh, Billy Donovan talking, that was shot with a cell phone shooting past one man's beard and another man's phone. But it's good. It takes you there. Yeah, and it's good coverage. And, and, our, and our readers uh, have come to expect it. They've also, they, they just want, it's all about content. And so the other thing that happens, Dave, is that our folks are going to shoot arounds early in the day. That's where a lot of the information's coming uh, pregame. They go to shoot arounds in the morning. And so they're getting sometimes visiting shoot arounds, but when they're coming off the road, a lot of times we're going to talk to the Thunder. So they're there uh, in the morning at the morning shoot around pregame. They're there uh, when the coach is talking pregame and the players. And then of course, post game gathering, we have a column, Barry Trammell's writing a column tonight, uh, a main bar, usually by Eric or um, Anthony. And then we have what we call the Thunder Journal. And that's something new we've started. You know, we used to always just have a notebook and that was good. But I wanted, our, I wanted our writers to have more of a license to do some writing and, and provide some uh, perspective that maybe the notebook, the title of the notebook didn't signify. Notebook is kind of like, well, here's all the other stuff. It's facts. The facts that we can get. Here's stats. what they said. I really wanted a lot more perspective. I wanted, uh, you know, let's see if we can't get them, uh, take, take us behind the scenes. I really admired the way the Washington Post did it with the Nationals Journal. So we've been doing that lately with OU and OSU and the Thunder. And Eric Horn's been on that journal lots of nights. Um, it takes a different approach. Sometimes they're writing a lot more than we can get in the newspaper that night. But our cup runneth over and we're able to dole it out to readers uh, throughout the week and also on News OK. And of course, you have ladies and gentlemen working the desk as well. Absolutely. I mean, every night we have somebody, uh, Rob Backus, uh, our, our lead designer, uh, Raina Kemp, uh, another one of our designers, Trent Shaded, our section editor many of the nights, uh, Scott Munn, assistant sports editor, man in the desk, uh, Chris Brannick, uh, slotting at Dylan Phillips. Uh, those are a lot of people. Ed Godfrey, a guy who is just a veteran, used all across our newsroom, uh, reading, uh, editing stuff. And then uh, Todd Sean Thaler and Darla Smith uh, handling the results. You know, it takes a village. It does take uh, a village. And uh, to get the internet stocked, to get the uh, stories posted for Oklahoman.com readers and, and edited uh, for the paper, you know, we're, we're, we have a lot of people focused on this and uh, it's a great team to work with. It's good stuff. It's interesting to see how it, how it all comes together. And, you know, everybody's sports fans. They're certainly engaged. We'll get you out on this. One week in, who's the best team? Uh, I mentioned that Toronto is one of three undefeated teams. Golden State and the Clippers are also undefeated. They play later tonight at 930. There for a second, I thought you were going to ask me about what was the best sports team. And I'm going to use this. I want to say this before we, we move to the real question. The video team here at the Oklahoma <laughs> is amazing too, Dave. We drop these videos in the middle of the night sometimes, and they're long after hours. And the way they get produced into a story, and we, we give you the raw material. You guys make it a story. So they're, the video team and the photography is just a huge part of what they do. It's not very interesting without the pictures. So you guys, uh, you guys set it in motion for us, and I really appreciate that. The best team, I'm going with the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, they look like it, don't they? They beat, who they beat by 50 last night? That beat the Memphis Grizzlies by 50? Is yeah, that, that right? Yeah, that was shocking. Sometimes the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies don't look like they're going to give up 50 points. Right. Oof, that left a mark. It did tonight over at Chesapeake Energy Arena. It tips off at 7 p.m. The Thunder and the Raptors. Full coverage can be found throughout the night on newsok.com. And of course, coverage in the Oklahoman. Mike Sherman, I appreciate your time tonight with the pregame show. His cast of thousands will be covering the game courtside and uh, behind the scenes. Big thanks to Todd Frazier, Paige Dillard, and the rest of the video team. Enjoy the game tonight, everybody.